it's always something that's not good for their main businesses. So that's the reason when people say, well, why do they want to do all this? That's why. And uh, we've been struggling a long time to just let the word get the word get out there and people understand what we have to say. And all we can can do say is that all our stuff hangs together and more and more stuff is coming out that we're proven correct. I mean, there's all kinds of people now that are servicing Hindi Capital in London. Uh, even this Jim Rickards, and he's a sharp guy, you know, he might differ with us in LTCM because we think he had a confidentiality agreement with the government. He can't say anything, he's, and he's allowed not to say anything. Uh, he's out there talking about government inf inf intervention, government manipulation. Uh, he's, he's more vociferous almost than we are at times. And there are many others that uh, are, are gradually coming to the, uh, uh, are showing up and supporting our position. But it's been a long haul. We have a long way to go. But I tell you, it's been a most fun trip. And uh, it's, we have an exciting one with a lot of money to be made in the uh, months and years ahead. Hey, uh, Morgan SLV here. Uh, just like to say that it's a great honor uh, to speak with you, Bill. Hopefully I'm transmitting. My question is, what do you see the ultimate ratio between uh, silver to gold, the silver to gold ratio, number one, and number two, after a blow-off or whatever we think may or may not happen with the gold and silver, uh, you know, a, in a blow-off scenario, what would you suggest uh, or what would you be looking at to invest next, in, you know, with your, uh, with your proceeds? I hope to be riding off in the sunset when that happens. <laughs> Not to be flipped, but that's what I think. It's so hard to say because, you know, the thing that people, a lot of people now, not, not not you all, but the public thinks right now, not silver so much, but gold is so expensive. Remember, I said three to 5000 when it was at four thirty six in 2005. I don't know if that's, it could be go much higher than that. And what's happened is... It, it's very hard to judge like other markets. Right now, the sentiment, even now, with gold at this price and silver money, there's not a lot of excitement out there. The little stocks are still dead. A lot of the uh, uh, websites, are, 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 are they're, they're not flourishing. I know it's one of the reasons I'm excited about doing this, because I'm trying to get to a, a different demographic. I mean, I go to speak at all these shows, and, you know, it's always the old fart people like myself. And, like, you know, there's, there's not that many young people around. And... Uh, I met some real sharp ones, and, uh, you know, they're as, as good as they get, but there's not that many. And so my point in bringing that to your question is they're going to come in and get involved. And it's, as I said earlier, it's going to be like the Internet thing. So the prices which have been so suppressed are going to do things that we, we couldn't even imagine, I don't think, uh, you know, just being, even you know, just regular uh, objectives. It's liable to go much further than people can conceive because the herd's still coming our way and the idea is what probably you, what I can say is I think you're going to get in just an incredible surge everyone's going to get excited at some, some levels you know pick a number depending upon the physical market and default situations if they occur then everyone's going to get involved and that's when you get your first major correction and and you know then it'll still be really good but probably the big move is coming right after that once they clean out the newbies out of the market, then you get the thing where, where it just goes ballistic. So all I know is uh, it's like anything else. You know, when things go in the first stage, it's always a great way to take half your money off the table so you're home free on the trade and then hold on the rest for the, for the really spectacular move down the road. That's, uh, that's how I'm planning to play it. And, uh uh, I hope I get it. I hope I get it right. So far, the upside's been easy. My forte is getting in. Um, uh, I'm not. The, I'm not the best guy in the world to talk to when to sell. Okay, uh, I just got a quick question. Um, how do you see gold and silver being used during an economic collapse? I mean, I don't know if you've thought too much about that, but we talk about it a lot in here. I just kind of wondered, you know, how do you think it would come into play during economic collapse? Yeah, wait, that's a good question. We talk about it all the time, too, and I discuss it quite a bit. 
Um, and again, we're talking about my commentary. I, I hope that a lot of you will sign up for a two-week free trial. Like I said we have a special uh, offer. It's going to be for 99 bucks for six months for the people that code in on this thing, and Kirsty will take care of that. But, yeah, we get into this all the time. It, one of the things that was exciting about silver, as I mentioned earlier, which since the game's changed, is that when the markets were falling apart a few weeks ago, and recently, silver has performed, and uh, it, it's going into a new zone, and especially especially gold here. What it has to happen, everyone you know, it's common public knowledge, helicopter bed. The United States is in rough shape. I mean, again, same stuff you talk about. The U.S. is broke. A lot of the states are broke. The people's balance sheets, individuals stink. Uh, everyone's nervous and concerned. Commercial real estate can fall off a cliff. Uh, there's resets in the different uh, uh, real estate areas that are going to surface. Uh, they've just thrown everything at the markets. Uh, uh, ben, but getting back what they're going to do, Ben Bernanke in his latest speech or in Jackson Hole, he talked about using unconventional methods. That was the operative word, which you didn't hear much from the, the Muppets on, uh, on uh, CNBC. But they have no choice. So this is what's coming. And we were talking about it with uh, lunch today with a friend of mine, uh, uh, Nick Ferris at Soma Gold, and that he's the CEO of the company, and talking about the difference between uh, uh, inflation uh, and hyperinflation. And basically, when you get into hyperinflation, you're talking about a lack of confidence, a collapse in the dollar, and everybody just trying to buy things. And uh, we all know, uh, that the, pardon me, a lot of us believe the dollar is extremely vulnerable. Uh, we know what the Fed's doing. I mean, it's a trillion here, a trillion there. We can't pay for anything. So the dollar's an accident waiting to happen. And the reason that that's important, in my opinion, is because, yeah, a lot of other countries are in trouble, like we are. But we're probably one of the brokest, but most of the reserve currency in the world. And that's what makes it so different rather than just talking about who's broke or who's better off. When things start to go, everyone's going to want to get out of their dollars. Because that's when it's oversupplied everywhere. And so I think what's going to happen is that then that's what you're starting to see. People are going to go to gold and silver because especially the U.S., we've got to print. They've got to do something because things are falling apart. The average Joe in America, um, I've been writing about this for years, the standard of living is going to go down 35%, in my opinion, again. And, and the, the people are going to be going to gold and to silver because they're just gonna they're just gonna pump and uh, that's the way it's going to be I think and, and I and I think you know people talk about gold going up in a deflation I, inflation's obvious but there's many cases that uh, you know, which gold is shown to move up in a deflation and what I think is going to happen is what I'm you're starting to hear a lot more about is that you can have inflation and deflation at the same time people can't afford their homes a stock market could go either way either up with hyperinfl up in big inflation or down because interest rates are starting to go way up and 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 the economy falls about further but the bottom line is we're in the driver's seat now i think and uh uh again if you've been involved in gold and to a lesser extent silver but it's catching up for 10 years nobody talks about it outside of our of, of our kind of groups it's uh you know relative to the price action i mean can you imagine the dow being at 14 50 15 000 right now and and uh people not getting into it much website shares are shares are blah for the most part you've got some big winners but a lot of the shares like the one i mentioned are just way under price way under value are going to change hey bill i want to say thanks for taking the time to speak to us tonight uh, i've got two questions for you first one uh would it be necessarily a bad thing well, since silver and gold, more silver than gold, actually, but since they're both actually used in industrial uses, would it be a bad thing if the prices rose too rapidly due to its industrial use and mainly because an industry might stray away from using those metals anymore due to the price inflation? And also, what is your take on adding palladium and platinum to your whole physical metal holdings well uh, good question uh, you get what I mentioned earlier it happens especially in the 
price savvy countries like India, uh, we get sticker shock. Uh, price goes up too fast; they just the buyers just disappear. But what's a little different this time? It can change. One is the shortage situation I mentioned. But the West is, with the public's not in it, the West tends to buy strength when it becomes a, a mania, so to speak. So that can counter some of the other buying. But yes, if it goes up too quickly, too fast, um, uh, the prices t tend to correct. But if, if well, what can happen is, again, if you have a physical problem, um, when you have to have it, you have to have it. You know, you, you just, you've got to pay any price. I actually think I saw this on the clothes the other day. Silver went up, uh, it's, it's a couple times that we've seen it go 14 50 cents right into the closing bell on the Comex. I mean, it was like it was panic buying, and I wrote about this. I've written about it a couple times. I said, this is just not normal. This is, with other markets not doing anything. So, yeah, you'd like a steady good market, but we haven't to worry about that because uh, we have all these rules, the gold car rules, just a 2% rule, and, you know, then they, they sell out to plan A at 3 a.m. in the morning, and then plan B is after the PM fix, and plan C is in the access market when there's was less uh, volume so they could influence the market. So, They've kept the price way below where it would be, and that's the thing here. It's different. The goal, for example, is half of where it should be. So we have so much catching up to do. Regarding platinum and palladium, um, you know, I don't follow them that well. I can say this, that gold and platinum used to trade around the same price, and $350 more than gold is now. So gold's got a lot of catch up, uh, catching up to do there. Now, because they're more industrial, uh, then Golden said more should the, the economy contract quite a bit. Yeah, um, hi there. Calling from London. I appreciate your time. Hope I'm transmitting here. Um, I'm sorry, there. I, sorry I'm, I'm just new to the game, so I've got a very basic question. Um, what happened in the 1980s, 70s with the home?